useful. Now, something else on the website, just in case I was interested in, in various kinds of fuels, are the fuels themselves. And, uh, you know, if you want to learn about different, I mean, I in my car, I run biodiesel in my car. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at least the, the first the first 20 years of the car, it, was, uh, it wasn't, but mm -hmm. now, the, the last several years, it has been. So, mm -hmm. I mean, do you talk about fuels like that, or, or what do you um, talk about there? Yeah, we try to... Um uh, you know, kind of list uh, <coughs> various sources that the electric fuel comes from um, and also talk about uh, things like hydrogen and uh, biofuels uh, and ethanols okay. and uh, all of that sort of stuff. We do call the hydrogen cars hydrogen full cells yeah. and because we think it's a, it's a really a foolish thing that isn't going to happen for another 20 years. So they've got more problems than uh, electric cars do by a factor of 10. Uh, yeah. just and what it comes down to uh, with a fuel cell car is that basically, you know, you're replacing, uh, you know, an inexpensive or even an expensive, you know, lithium battery with a couple million dollars worth of fuel cells. It's just the battery mm -hmm. for an electric car. Probably not going to run out and buy one of those cars. Anyway. Right, no, probably not. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and I wouldn't until they're proven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another part of the website itself is conversions. And we're going to be getting into Dave, Dave's world here in just mm -hmm. a minute. But tell me just about it from the website standpoint about conversions. What can I go and learn from your side? Uh, to, we, you know, try to uh, talk about, uh, you know, that's where we uh, try to get into a little bit more of uh, the components that are involved in an EV and uh, you know what it takes uh, to do a conversion um, you know what to expect what to shoot for what kind of cars are good so is it pretty good Dave can I learn something on that site oh yeah I think so I, I haven't really seen the website much lately and I don't I, I try to spend most of my time in the garage and not on the computer so. all right well you know what we're gonna do <laughs> yeah. Jason Knoll a crack uh, guy right here at scan TV was out at, at your shop the other day and he's we've got a, a bunch of different video clips so let's just talk about you're going through a conversion. Are we ready with the first clip? All right, let's go, let's go to that. Dave, tell us what we were seeing here. Well, this here. is one of the less important parts. It's just this is a heater uh, relay to turn your heater on. You've got a, uh, we take a ceramic heater that you'd bar, uh, buy at uh, Home Depot, and we replace the heater core that's in your car that normally runs off of hot mm -hmm. water. What and, we got here? And this is the uh, main contactor that turns on the power to your system, just like you would turn on any appliance in your house. Yeah, what if it gets dirty? Uh, it's, it's in a... It's, it will eat through most dirt. I, I, it will handle the dirt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And this here is another angle of that, that, that contactor. And when you turn your key on, this thing goes click, and that alerts you to the fact that the car is on. It makes no noise. It just makes that click. Your car is on, ready to go. Hmm. This here is the main fuse. You can see it's, it's gigantic, and everything, every kind of appliance you have in, a, you know, in the car, all components. This is an adapter plate, which adapts the the motor, the electric motor, up to the transmission in the car. This is a, a template that I've uh, used to make that adapter plate with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to see how that works yeah. in a few minutes. And, and there's a typical electric motor. That's, uh, that's so it powers the car. Yeah, that powers the car. It's and uh, my washing machine at the same time. Eight inches, <laughs> eight inches in diameter, uh, 15 inches long, weighs about 107 pounds. That's uh, basically the hub that goes on the front of the motor. You bolt your uh, flywheel to. Use existing flywheel that's normally in a car, and we almost always use stick shifts because we're back to that efficiency word. They're more efficient with an automatic. You're going to throw away 20 percent. So hmm. there's that normal clutch disc. Sometimes you uh, eliminate the flywheel. You don't really need it in an electric car. You don't need the clutch in an electric car. And sometimes I'll just bolt that clutch disc straight in uh, to the tranny, and you you shift without using the clutch. Huh. Well, that's a good start because we're going to take a very short break. Just want to remind everyone that right here on Public Exposure, we are exploring uh, electric vehicles and conversions particularly of electric vehicles with the Seattle Electrical Vehicle Association. Um, Dave Cloud, who is a conversion specialist, and Ryan Fulcher, the, the webmaster, is here, as well as Steve Lowe. We got him on camera. Steve is the uh, president of the association. For more information, go to the website, www.seattleeva.org, and you're going to learn just a ton of information. Dave, let's continue on. And Ryan, you just pop in any, any time that, that you feel interested on, on uh, sure. some of this stuff. But uh, let's go to the next clip. If we're ready with that, let's go. Dave, tell us what we got here. I think we're going to start with batteries. Okay, there's some, there's some <coughs> three choices of batteries there. These are, uh, there's a gel cell there first, and there's a wet battery in the middle. Those are both 12-volt batteries. And the one on the end was a common 6-volt golf cart battery. Mm -hmm. And we're back to that heater relay there, which is... is uh, Something that you just turn your heater on within your car. You, it's, uh, oh, so it, all the normal functions of a car, it's the same, it's just yep, a different you use, propulsion. use the same knobs to turn most of the stuff on in the car that you do. Use, use the same key, the same knobs. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. far, 
Well, and here's the fuse yeah, again. Yeah. Now, how often does that fuse have to be replaced? I never. I mean, it's, it, unless it, something goes wrong, you're in an accident or something, and something shorts out in the car, that fuse is there to blow to stop well, fires from taking place. All right, now, are the, uh, is it? It's electric, not electrical. <clears throat> Excuse us, Steve. Yeah. Is yeah. the um, um, fuse yeah. itself something that's not going to crack or anything like oh, that? Because yeah. fuses it's, do crack in houses. Yeah, yeah, this isn't going to crack. It's, it's a durable thing. Mm, okay. That's part of the protection. We also have a, a big red button that sticks out of the middle of the dash. That we, uh, in case yeah, here any, we are. We're, we're back again yeah, here, with here, some more stuff. Here's a typical motor controller that's in a car. Um, there, you've got um, you, you've, you've got a lot of things that you can relate to a regular car part. You've got uh, the motor controller, which is the same as a carburetor in a car. It feeds the motor and tells it how much how fast to go, how much power to produce. Mm -hmm. Here's more okay. stuff. And this is the pot box. This hooks up to your throttle cable. And we no longer call it a gas pedal. We call it a throttle. And throttle cable. Company. Okay, I got you. And this is this heater core that I was talking about earlier. And this is different in an electric car than it is in, in a gas-powered car. Yes, because this one's electric and the, one of the gas cars is water-heated. Oh, I see. So I've just taken that heater core out of that ceramic heater that you'd buy. This is a typical battery charger. Uh, this one plugs into 110, will charge your car in about eight hours. Yeah, if, I, you're, seriously, you're I, I literally, I just, I just drop and put it on the extension cord in my house? Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Oh, that's we, pretty cool. We, we have them to plug into 220 also and it'll charge your car twice as fast. And so the limitation is really on how much money you want to spend on your charger, and some chargers plug into 110 or 220. Mm -hmm. Ryan, do you want one of these cars? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, do, you, do you want one that, that converts, or do you want one that you go and buy off an assembly line? Um, well, I, I, I mentioned the Prius that, that I think I mentioned the Prius that, uh, we, that I have that we've converted into a plug-in hybrid. Um, using some, uh, there's a local guy that builds battery electric battery chargers. We're using his components in that. I've also got a hybrid uh, Honda Insight that I'd like to do more of an electric vehicle conversion with. Um, so, and I'm working on a electric motorcycle conversion. I've got an old uh, a Ninja uh, kind of sport bike. Uh, that so this is real stuff to you. Oh yeah. This just oh, yeah, isn't an absolutely. academic exercise. No, no. And Dave, you're actually doing this for people, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I used to do two or three conversions a year, but now I'm usually down to about one conversion a year. Mm -hmm. And I just I, I do it more as a hobby than I do a business. Uh, are we ready for the next clip? Because what we're going to do on, the ne on this next clip is that uh, Dave was actually showing uh, to uh, Jason Knoll exactly what he was doing. So we're going to turn the audio off out here, and we're going to turn it on up there. And if we're ready to go with that, let's roll. This is a uh, typical motor that we would use in a large EV conversion, such as a small pickup truck or, or a mid-sized car. This is an advanced 9-inch motor. Um, we build an adapter plate for this by using a piece of plexiglass where we can see through the glass and pick up the holes on the transmission. So this would fit onto the transmission and then we drill these holes that fit the transmission and then we take the same piece of plexiglass, put it over the motor and drill the motor holes. From that template, we'd make one of these aluminum adapter plates. This one here is made out of a half inch piece of aluminum. It goes onto the motor, it actually registers up in here so it so it stays square and doesn't move. Then from this stage here we put a hub on it. This is a typical taper lock hub that we might use on a on a uh, conversion. It's also got a key cut in it so it doesn't slip. This slips over the end of the motor shaft. You can see it's pretty snug fit, it fits on there pretty tight. From this point here we either go two ways. We go with a clutch or we go clutchless. If you go clutchless you take the center test you build a plate that goes on here and then this would go on to that plate and directly into the transmission. If you wanted to put a clutch in here you'd put your flywheel on here and then bolt your clutch up the same way you would in the gas car. Wow, pretty interesting there. Pretty interesting. So.